We look down Utah Street on a cool and cloudy early evening here from Baltimore, Maryland. It's the middle game of this three game series. The Mariners and the Orioles from inside beautiful Camden Yards. No surprise Mariners fans representing here inside Camden Yards <laughs> Edgar and Felix well represented in the seats. And wouldn't you imagine Robinson Cano. Well he's feeling pretty good these days Mike. As he should. What a game he had last night. He's really been swinging the bat well. We'll take a look at the lineup for the Mariners. Leave things off by Oki and then it's Seth Smith. What a night Seth Smith had in last night's game. You can see one for three but was on base three times and scored three runs ahead of Cano. Cano he's the one you want to watch tonight. 452 hitter off of Tillman with a couple of home runs. Nelson Cruz last night three for three with a home run. Five RBIs and Kyle Seeger. Continues his hot inning two for four with a home run and three RBIs in last night's game for Tillman. This will be his ninth start of the year. ERA right at two and a half. 18 walks 47 strikeouts and 45 and a third opponents hitting just 217. He's only given up one home run. He's been a group in a groove so far this season as he fires away to Oki and he starts things off with a strike. For Tillman, he has a good fastball and he will use it about 50% of the time, but his fastball velocity at 92 miles an hour. Now, the second pitch Alvarez and Machado going after it. It is Machado who has the platinum glove to make the out. Take a look at the rest of the defense. Kim, not in last night's game, getting the start in left field. Adam Jones, one of the better center fielders in the game so far. And at third base, you have Alvarez did not start, but Pedro Alvarez, the veteran, back at third base. Machado normally at third. He's had to move to shortstop because J.J. Hardy has been hurt. Defensive setup brought to you by American Family Insurance. And Hardy expected to miss about two months because of a fractured foot, as we can see. In eight career starts, Tillman an ERA underneath three against the Mariners. And has not been on the losing side of a decision. One out now facing Seth Smith. You know, Mike, you mentioned a moment ago that Smith scored three runs in last night's game. And Seth's post game comments, he, he made it sound pretty simple. He said, well, that's kind of baseball 101. You get on base in front of the big bats. But it's, it's easier said than done, I think is the point. No, it is. I, th I think when you think about Seth and the type of at bats that he puts together, a professional hitter, and he's ready to hit. He's not up there just trying to, to, to work walks. He wants to hit. And I thought that last night was a good example of him fouling off some tough pitches until eventually they ended up losing him and putting him on base. A little bit of a light rain all of a sudden here from Baltimore. He balls in a strike as we have some small showers in the area around the ballpark. Batting practice as usual today for the guys. Nice for them to get on the field, be able to work out. Yesterday they were in the tunnels because it rained all day. Couple of bounds over to Davis, tight the line for out number two. Two up, two down for Tillman, who has spun five straight quality starts tonight. Starting pitcher for the Orioles. And over those last five starts, Tillman and ERA just above one and a half. Opponents hitting beneath 200 against Tillman. The Orioles have won each of his last five starts as well. Two outs, the base is empty for Robinson Cano, who has now picked up at least one hit in each of his last 10 games here from Camden Yards. One of the few times that we've seen a team shift with Cano hitting. Bit strange, especially when you consider last night's game. He was able to hit the ball hard to left field a couple of times, but they have to shift on. You see his career numbers here at Camden Yards. Likes hitting here 367, 15 home runs. And again, off of Tillman, 452 in his career with a couple of home runs. You're right about last night. Cano, a double down the line in left field in the first, RBI single to right field in the fifth, and then a run scoring double to left center in the sixth inning. And he lined out to the left fielder. By the opposite way, this turns Kim. But he's got enough room for round number three. So Tillman, that's a pretty minimal pitch count. Three up, three down. Half inning in the books. We go to the bottom of the first. Taiwan Walker about ready to take the hill.
Young Taiwan Walker, 23 years old, out of Yucaipa, California, making his 45th career Major League start. And how about a look at the lineup he'll face today, Mike? Or manager Buck Showalter. Well, right to Manny Machado, off to a fast start, hitting 327. Tied with the team lead with 11 home runs. You can see 50 hits this season, tied for third in the American League. Adam Jones has been hot lately. Want to be careful with him. Mark Trumbo, tied for the team lead in home runs at 11 and leads the club in RBIs. And Kim, so far, 28 at bats for him, only two strikeouts for the number nine hitter. Taiwan Walker on the year, 2 and 2 record, but a 2.63 ERA, 38 strikeouts and 37 and two thirds. Only six walks on the year. Opponents hitting 240, giving up four home runs. He mentioned the strikeout numbers for Taiwan. Taiwan, one of two Mariners pitchers with more strikeouts in innings pitched. We will see the other one tomorrow in Nathan Garns. Pretty impressive the strikeout rate so far for Taiwan. Missing with the first pitch to Rickard. Unfortunately, the first pitch was right down the middle and he missed it. Taiwan had that fantastic month of April four quality starts and four total starts for Taiwan the first month of the season he's looking for his first quality start in this month of May as the count goes to two and one now the ground up the middle Marte can't get there. Sneaks out through Rickard as a board to lead off single. Take a look at the defense brought to you by American Family Insurance. Seth Smith in right field last night, seven putouts. He was running all over the place, but had a good night defensively. Robinson Cano, we've talked a lot about his offense, but only one error on the year for Cano. And Chris Ionetta will do the catching this evening. Leadoff man aboard for Manny Machado as we can take a look at what Taiwan did his last time out. He was really cruising along against the Rays and then all of a sudden lost the strike zone. We showed you six walks on the year, three of them coming in that game. He had nine strikeouts, no decision for Taiwan. Machado off the hands, a pop up towards Seeger. Right by the box, and easy out number one. That last pitch, 92 mile an hour fastball in off the plate. I think for Taiwan we'll see him pitch inside quite a bit so that he can get to his curveball and change up. One of the things that I've noticed with Taiwan this year is typically the first time through the lineup he will use his fastball a lot and then second third time through use his curveball change up occasional slider. You know Mike you mentioned the walks in the grand slam or his last time out of the mound versus Tampa Bay at home. You mentioned this at the time and Taiwan confirmed it the following days in the clubhouse more than the grand slam it was the walks the three walks in that inning that he was most frustrated with because that is what led to that home run no time the game up right he, he had a nice lead he, he was able to get some run support and the thing that was surprising about the walks is he completely got away from his fastball at some point you have to challenge guys and in that game he was working on his breaking ball and his change up using the slider use the slider more than he ever has. And I, I thought that at some point he had to get back to his fastball just to get in the strike zone. And unfortunately, you mentioned the grand slam by then, it was too late. And he said it after the fact that he felt that that was the best stuff, the pure, best pure stuff that he's had all season. And you were talking about the slider. Uh, I agree. He had a good slider. His slider was about 88 miles an hour. Good fastball, 95 96. The 0 1 to Jones. And I, I talked to Mel Stottlemyre about it, and it's a fairly simple question. I said, What happened? He was cruising along. I thought he had no hit stuff, and I really thought he was going to strike out maybe 14 or 15. And he said, You know, he just lost his concentration, didn't focus on where he was at in the game. We were talking about the score earlier, and he had a nice lead. And he said, By the time that he tried to get, get the wheels back on, he just couldn't do it. Ball to two strikes to Adam Jones. Now this offense this season for the Orioles second in the league in on base percentage and yet last night Baltimore's offense two hits three walks that was it Wade Miley really clipped the wings of the birds last night. No he pitched really well that you consider their second in hitting first in home runs and 
you mentioned it to me probably in the fifth inning that they really hadn't hit a ball hard and they had a lot of soft contact that was it basically all night. For Taiwan his average fastball this year is at 94 miles an hour he's still working on his slider it'll be about 88. His changeup and his curveball have been really good pitches for him. The league hitting just 108 against his changeup, 118 on his curveball. This is soft, high to left center. Martin back at the wall. <laughs> he makes the catch. Robbery here in Baltimore by Martin. Taking it right off the wall. There are a couple things on this play and for Martin batting average around 200 but he makes up for it with the defense he's played this year as you take a look at the big fish casino big catch the amount of ground that he had to cover just to get to that point to make the leaping catch was incredible tremendous speed in the outfield a direct route timed his jump well played by Martin looks like that would have gone right off the top of the wall had Martin not been there what a catch. Here is Davis who swings and misses. We'll take another look at that one. He's barely in the picture. That's how much ground he had to cover. One ball and one strike on Davis. Now, not that it makes Adam Jones feel any better, but he's probably done that to a guy or two over the course of his career. I understand that he wanted to hit, but he should be able to appreciate <laughs> a play like that for sure. Two outs, Rickard at first base after a ground ball single. Snap throw. One and two on Davis. Well, Jones last night had his eight game hitting streak snapped. <laughs> <laughs> He is not wanting to tip the cap. Now the guy like Martin was at the top of the grocery list this offseason for Jerry DePoto and we have seen the dividends already about two months into things. There goes Rickard. He'll dive headlong after a punch out as Walker gets his first strikeout of the night. And does he ever tip his cap to Martin at center field? We are scoreless through one. Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by your local Ford stores. By Safeco Insurance, find a local agent at Safeco.com. And by the Emerald Queen Casino, presenting Kenny Rogers, the gambler's last deal, July 8th. Tickets at EmeraldQueen.com. Scoreless as we start at the top of the second. And an incredible catch right up against the wall by Leonis Martin to rob extra bases from Adam Jones. 
wonder how often the pitchers take him out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> He's saving them a lot of runs. Nelson Cruz leads off the Mariners second. Well, speaking of taking people out to dinner, Mike, Wade Miley today was talking about how much he appreciates this Mariners offense going out there and just hanging runs <laughs> up on the board all the time. And crooked numbers at that. It seems like every other inning before Miley's up on the mound. And uh, he said, I might need to take these guys out to dinner. And the question was, of course, asked, where are you going to take them? And Miley, without hesitation, a McDonald's. <laughs> so Big Mac's all around for the guys, thanks to that man. <laughs> One and two. As you can imagine, Miley was in pretty good spirits today after six scoreless last night. Just a couple of hits to this very tough offense that the Orioles have. Cruz down on strikes. Take a look at opponent average and velocity. His changeup has been a really good pitch for him this year. Much improved changeup. Opponent's hitting just 140. His curveball, when you get a lot of ground balls with the curveball, 167 batting average. He also mix in a slider in his fastball. You can see is right around 92 miles an hour. But you'll see the Mariners try to be aggressive on his fastball. You saw the averages for that reason. Try not to let him get to his secondary pitches. One out for Kyle Seeger. Showing bunts with the shift on. But April sure does seem like a long time ago for Kyle Seeger, doesn't it, Mike? He hasn't thought about it for a long time. <laughs> it, was, it was a tough three weeks in April, but since then, he's really been swinging the bat well, including a home run yesterday. He's tied with Cruz, both of them with eight home runs. Kyle, 24 RBIs. It's good to see. Well, if somebody would have told Kyle near the end of April that the next month he would be leading. All major league hitters and extra base hits on the 18th of May. He probably would have felt a little bit better, but he does. A dozen extra base hits so far this month, better than any other hitter in the bigs. I noticed today, just taking a look at it because Kyle has been so hot, his brother Corey Seeger has had a pretty good week and a half, too. They both homered last night. Yeah, Corey's hit five home runs in the last seven games. Talented family. It's a strike in to make it three and one. Corey, of course, the young shortstop for the Dodgers. He really burst out of the scene last year. Top prospect in baseball. And a walk to Seeger with one out. One out and one on for Adam Lynn. When you purchase single game tickets at a Mariners team store, you'll save 10% off all regularly priced merchandise, like the new 2016 Navy alternate road jersey. So gear up for Mariners baseball when you get tickets at one of the five team store locations. Mariners family, the ballpark here in Baltimore. Mariners winning last night 10 to nothing. The Mariners have now won 14 of their. 20 road games. Lynn stares at strike one. Mariners have their first base runner, the walk to Seeger. He's at first. Tillman retired the side in order in the top of the first inning on nine pitches. And for Tillman, we talked about his changeup and the improvement, but when he needs a ground ball, he's going to go to either his curveball or the changeup. You can see the curveball, 67% of the time that it's put in play, it'll be on the ground changeup right at 53%. He's always had the good curveball, but if you look at his changeup in 2014, opponents hitting 311 off of his changeup. Last year it dropped down to 219, and this year a buck 40 so far. It's interesting when you look at his numbers because he's been able to keep the ball on the ground so well with his off speed pitches and yet he has been one of the most guilty fly ball pitchers in the American League. He has a fly ball rate of over 60 percent. As a 
weak wave there from Lynn. They will not be happy when he goes back and looks at the video. The first two pitches called strikes. You can see on the EQC tracer, they weren't on the plate, and really they weren't that close. So that's the reason why he had to chase this last pitch. He puts it in exactly the same place as the third pitch, the second strike in that at bat, and he just tried to foul it off. But that's a tough AB. Boy, no doubt about that. So Cruz strikes out on a slider, Lind this time on a fastball. Seeger at first base. And steps Chris Zionetta. Shears his bat and drops it into right field. Seeger making the turn at second base. On his way to third, the Mariners have runners on the corners with two outs. Zionetta going after the first pitch. That was interesting. Last night, he flew out to right field four times in a row. So I was curious to see what he was going to do tonight. Well, he goes the other way. This is a fastball, 93 miles an hour. He hits it right off the end of the bat. That's why it explodes. But he'll take the base hit. Seeger, the one out of walk now at third base. Ionetta had the man at first as that clears the plate for Cattell Marte. The Mariners last night, an impressive five for eight with runners in scoring position. Can't ask for much better than that. Straight back for strike one. It has been the rotation which has been really the Achilles heel for this Orioles club. A rotation ERA of just under 440. That's seventh in the American League. They've got one of the best offenses. The best bullpen in the league. But the rotation has struggled trying to get to Tillman early. 0 and 2. Marte helping him out a couple of fastballs up out of the strike zone. Tough to catch up to 93. This letter high. Two out Seeger at third, Ionetta at first base. And Marte backed in a corner behind 0 and 2. Holds back. Tillman's 1 2. Evens things up. Mariners are the runner 90 feet from home early on here tonight against Chris Tillman. In play, but right to Machado. On to second base, and the Mariners strand two. We're through an inning and a half on what has turned out to be another very pleasant night here from Baltimore. Look there, sky high at the Inner Harbor. Mariners and the Orioles scoreless.
Mariners history here in Baltimore. The Midsummer Classic back in 1993, the Home Run Derby. The only man to ever hit the building on the fly in right field. Pretty impressive to say the least. Join us for Fireworks Night presented by Root Sports and moving 92.5 on Friday, May 27th. The soundtrack for the Pyrotechnics will consist of a one of a kind Mariners music mix featuring some of the most memorable songs heard at the Kingdom and Safeco Field. Get tickets at Mariners.com. I know it was home run derby, Mike, but Four, still. 465 <laughs> feet. That's not an easy thing to do, even though it is home run derby and batting practice. And that really is playing a video game. <laughs> Mark Trumbo leads off the Orioles second, and he scorches this one to left, and the Orioles lead it one to nothing. His 12th of the season, he is now tied for the league lead. He leads Baltimore in home runs and RBIs. And Taiwan trying to sneak a curveball by him, but he left it up and in the middle of the plate, 73 miles an hour. Not a lot of break to it. First pitch strike to Weeders. Trumbo yesterday giving Edgar Martinez, Mike, all kinds of credit in the very short window of time that those two worked together. And we know the last year Trumbo had a span of ballpark in about two weeks where he looked about as lost as any hitter in the game, and then he really came out of it, and it was a lot of hard work with Edgar Martinez. Yeah, Edgar helped him out a bunch. And no surprise we saw Mark when he started to come out of it and started swinging the bat well it was working the other way and then starting to work your way around the field and look he's in the batter's box to hit the ball out of the ballpark 12 home runs this year he's certainly doing that again but I think Edgar really helped him out with his setup and his weight transfer and all the different things that you have to do to be consistent and Trumbo is off to a great start with that home run he's hitting over 300 with 12 home runs. He has been a huge piece of the puzzle this year for the Orioles. Baltimore entered tonight, by the way, tied with Tampa Bay for the most home runs in the American League. The Mariners trailing both those teams by now. If you include Trumbo's homer, four on the season, the Mariners have had their share. Two balls and two strikes to Weeders. This is snow tied to right field, and it is back to back shots for the Orioles. Ends up hitting a fastball 93 miles an hour. Just above the knees on the inner half of the plate. And you can see Ionetta set up on the outside corner, so Taiwan missed his spot. Well, the Orioles had been held scoreless in 14 consecutive innings. Entering this bottom of the second, they've gone back to back to lead things off. Well, for Taiwan, we're going to look. At the average and opponent slugging percentage, and especially the slugging percentage, you can see on his fastball, I average at 312, a slugging 442, and the curveball, even though it's a low average, when they hit it, they're doing some damage. A much needed out number one. There you can see the slugging on the curveball at 471. A lot of times Taiwan will throw that curveball and just try to throw it for a strike early in the count. He has another one that he'll throw harder. Typically, he'll try to bounce it off the plate. That's the one he'll get some swings and misses or some weak round balls off it. But it's the one early, typically, if he gets hurt, it's on that one because it's just kind of spinning up there like we saw with Trumbo. Like, this is almost unbelievable. This is now the seventh time this year the Orioles 
have gone back to back seventh time this year and we're not even through the second month of the season that's not even a full year for most teams. No you're right and not to take anything away from him but I wonder how many times that happened in this ballpark. At least three. I mean you'd have to think if not maybe even all of them that is they've got power that will play anywhere but it especially plays well here inside Camden Yards. Two balls and a strike to scope. Two power spots in this ballpark for the lefties is right where Weeders hit his. It's only 318. They have the tall wall, but 318 there. And then for the right handers, you have left center field. Short wall, only 364 in that gap. There's the wall. Full count to scope. And he gets some swinging. Tomorrow, this will be an early one back home. We will hit the airwaves at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Nathan Carnes going up against Tyler Wilson. Carnes will be making his fifth career start against the Orioles. Remember, he spent time with Tampa Bay in the division. So we saw Baltimore a number of times last season. Wilson taking over for the injured Giovanni Gallardo on the disabled list with a shoulder injury. First pitch misses to Kim. Mike, looked like we saw back to back sliders there possibly to scope a right handed hitter. That's a, a pitch that we know can be so deadly for Taiwan once he starts to really get the feel for it. Yeah, it's something that talking to Mel Stoudemire, we talked about Taiwan's last start and throwing that pitch more. And Mel was really happy with the development of the slider. We cue ball over to Lind. And that'll be it for the Orioles. So Taiwan sits down Alvarez, Scope, and Kim, but not before Trumbo and Weeders go back to back. All right, thank you, Ange. As Martin leads off the top of the third, Mariners playing from behind now. For Martin, a couple of hits and seven at bats against Tillman.
Our team picked up a hit last night that was at first ruled an error on Davis at first base and then overturned to become a base hit. And Martin now ahead of the count three and nothing. And looking at a strike just in there three and one. Tillman now 28 years old out of Anaheim. This is thumped out to right field and the Mariners get on the board. Martin with a shot over the fence. It's two to one Orioles. For Martin his sixth home run on the year. And he takes advantage of a really good count. Fastball right in the middle of the plate at 90 miles an hour. We're going to bring up Aoki. Popped out to the third baseman his first time up. Now, Martin now joins a very exclusive list on the season, and that is hitters who have homered against Tillman. There's only been one other, and that's Evan Longoria. Tillman came into tonight's game having coughed up one homer in eight starts, spanning over 45 innings. The 1 1. Bounces in. He does not go on the appeal. Take a look at the last three outings for Tillman against the Tigers. A very good hitting call. We went seven innings, did not give up an earned run, and that one against Oakland, six and a third, three earned, and then against the Yankees, seven and one earned. Oki ahead of the count. On the ground, Machado gobbles it up. Round number one. Well, Mike, I think when you look at the numbers for Tillman, and this is not to discredit this the fantastic start to the season that Tillman has gotten off to, but his numbers just aren't sustainable from a fly ball standpoint. We mentioned that he's an extreme fly ball pitcher this year, a lot of that coming on his fastball. But so far this season, if you look at the amount of home runs off of fly balls, a very simple ratio. It's a 2%. I mean, that is a number that is certainly not sustainable whatsoever. If you compare that to somebody like Felix, Smith showing bunts. Felix is at about 12% on the season. Right. Miley last night was at about 18%. So 2% is it's unheard of. It's not sustainable, especially for a fly ball pitcher. It really kind of felt like whether it was going to be tonight or at some point uh, later this season that. Uh, some of those fly balls we're going to start to get out, especially for a pitcher who works here from Camden. Yeah, half his starts in this ballpark, and when summer hits and the temperatures heat up, we'll see if that number starts to go up more towards the average. And league average is about where Felix is, that kind of 12 percent mark. Shift on for Smith, thinking about bunting his way aboard. He is the tie and run. Pop up the opposite way and this gets out of play one and two. Now the way the Mariners have been swinging the bats especially on the road an early two nothing hole you knew that was not a whole lot. Fifth in the majors in runs scored on the road this year are the Mariners. And second in the big leagues when it comes to hitting home runs on the road. Only the Mets have homered more often away from their home ballpark. The Mariners leading the American League in that category. All three runs in this game so far tonight have come on solo homers. Trumbo, Weeders, and Martin. 
Smith down swinging. Two outs. Time to take a look at our Delta Airlines keep climbing standings as the Mariners are in first place over the Texas Rangers. Rangers playing earlier today, losing last night. The A's have started to make a little bit of noise. Angels ran into a bit of a buzzsaw recently. Interleague play facing Clayton Kershaw, who has just been absolutely unconscious so far this year. Mike, I think the number uh, 88 punch outs to lead all of baseball, and he's walked four batters. Right. Four. Talking about the A's making some noise. How about Chris Davis? Three home runs for him, including a walk off home run. And then he hit another one today. He now has 12 home runs on the year. Another one today. Wow. Outside, we'll be talking more about Chris Davis coming up in a bit. Cano hit the ball to the warning track in left his first time up. Two and one. Now, we were mentioning last night how important it is to get Cano, Cruz, and Seeger all going in the same direction at the same time. The three of them, Mike, in the month of May, they're hitting 373 with an OPS over a thousand. It is working. It's so rare for any team that has this caliber of player in the middle of their lineup when you talk about Cano, Cruz, and Kyle, and have them all going good at the same time. That is a very rare thing. Typically, one of them will be struggling. It has not been the case this month, certainly not last night when you consider all three of them drove in all 10 runs. Well, yeah, you hope, first of all, that all three are healthy at the same right. time. And then, assuming health, you hope that all three are going right at the same time. And in a game like this, those odds are, odds are probably pretty slim. You hope that can happen maybe for a month over the course of the season, and we're witnessing it right now. Or just make it happen three or four times you know, for a couple of weeks, just like you mentioned, the month of May. You'll take that. If you can get that happening three, four times over the course of the summer, we're going to do a lot of damage. And with their pitching, that should mean a lot of wins for them. They mentioned the road, averaging 5.4 runs on the road with the pitching that they have. They should win a lot of ball games, and that's why they're 14 and 6 now. Two outs, nobody on Cano, the tie and run at the plate for the 2 2. We've seen that curveball skip in there a couple of times already tonight. Count pushes full. So Kanoa now has company at the top of the leaderboard for most home runs in the league. Davis. Frazier of the White Sox. Now Trumbo as well. Enter today leading baseball with 36 RBIs. Count stays put. Now for Tillman. You mentioned the numbers that he's had against the Mariners in his career. One run or fewer against the Mariners in six of his first eight career starts against Seattle. He's been awfully tough. And he sears it in at 93. The strikeout kiddo looking, not pleased. El Martin, a sparkling catch in the first inning to take extra bases away from Adam Jones. And this time, a launch pad here from Camden Yards. Mariners are on the board to go to the bottom of the third.
Martin solo shot. Well, great news Town Transit's new Link Light rail stations on Capitol Hill and at the UW are now open, so plan your trip at soundtransit.org. A Baltimore light rail outside the ballpark on the other side of the iconic warehouse in right field. Walker starts Rickard off of the strike and does it again. Trying to stretch that slider out a little bit more. A little bit more, 86 miles an hour. Took a little bit of the velocity off of it, so it was more of a sweeping break. The one two. Missing this time with some heat, two balls and two strikes. By and large this year it has been the right handed hitters who have done damage to Taiwan Walker lefties haven't gotten a whole lot done against Taiwan change up the big reason why change up's a big reason why and his curveball not missing by much there's been a couple of calls during this at bat Taiwan not happy. And what I mean by that is this curveball. Like the one Trumbo hit out. We talked about the slugging against it. That's what's hurt him. My drive to Oki. Handles it easily for round number one. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Good start to the night for Martin. Home run and a crashing catch up against the wall in center field. One up, one down for Taiwan Walker. Now looking at Manny Machado. Now Machado has emerged early this season as an MVP candidate, playing for a first place team. Batting just under 330 on the season. The 0 2. And then the good news for Taiwan and the Mariners is his velocity starting to jump up. We've seen 94 95 here in this inning. Early in the game, he was 91 93. Overthrowing that slider a little bit at 90 miles an hour. And he gets Machado with 95 at the bottom rung of the strike zone. And you see Machado barking at the home plate umpire Rob Drake but this is a good pitch 95 miles an hour right at the knees. Definitely on the plate. Machado disagrees. Jones fouls away the first pitch. That really has been one of the things that has stood out so clearly for Taiwan this year. We know that he has at times really overpowering velocity, even more than tank from that 95, and yet it comes along with such supreme command. Only six walks on the year, half of those, as you mentioned earlier, Mike, in his last start. Well, and I think the other part of it too is, is he has such a good changeup. That's in the mind of the hitter. So his fastball is going to look even faster to the hitters when they're at home plate because they have to respect his changeup. Weak ground ball, hopping knee high to Marte. And Taiwan has retired the last six Orioles hitters in a row. Another look at the Inner Harbor. A little bit of a cloudy day earlier today for Baltimore. Through three, Orioles up by a run.
All right, thank you, Ange. Yeah, boy, Tyler O'Neill has been on fire. He's had a chance to meet him over the winter at FanFest. Off to a good start this season. Here is Nelson Cruz. Top of the fourth getting underway. 2 1 Orioles have the lead. They have the shift on for Nelly. Well, Mike, we knew that Tillman entering tonight had been pitching awfully well. An ERA of just over 160 in his last five starts. What have you seen now that he's facing the order the second time well, through? He has some late life to his fastball today. We're seeing some late swings on his fastball. And he really hasn't used his off speed pitches that much because his command of his fastball, and quite frankly, Rob Drake, the home plate umpire, are giving him a lot of room off the outside corner, so why not continue to throw it there? We especially saw that of the Adam Lind at bat. It ended up with a strikeout to Lind. Tailing right center field, plunks in for a base hit, rolls for a while until Jones can cut it off. Cruz galloping into second base and a slide to make it safe. Nelson Cruz a leadoff double. And he'll get a fastball out over the plate at 92 miles an hour and squares it up in the right center field gap. You can see Nelson running hard right out of the batter's box. He knows Adam Jones has one of the stronger throwing arms. Former teammate of his. He was a fan of his when he was in Baltimore and still a fan of him when he's now with the Mariners. Let's see if Kyle can get something that he can pull over to the right side. Tie and run at scoring position. Seeger the go ahead. Looks at ball one. Seeger last night was on base three times. It was highlighted by the three run smash out to right center field of the fifth. His eighth on the year. One and one. One of the things that makes Tillman tough, and if you look at his numbers this year, he'll throw his fastball a little more than 50% of the time, but his changeup, curveball, and slider, he gives them all equal play, 15% on each one of those. So it's tough as a hitter to eliminate a pitch or to sit on something in particular because he does a good job of mixing all of them in. He's able to get the strike with the slider, comes back and misses with the curveball. And it seems like for the most part, he's pretty comfortable throwing any of those pitches. Whether you're a right handed hitter or a left handed hitter, for the no. most part. No, he is. Cruz a leadoff double. Seeger gets Jack Knife to head of the count three and one. Mariners entering tonight tied for ninth in the league in batting average and yet third in the American League in runs scored fifth and on base and in slugging and third in homers. Seager walking for the second time. So both walks tonight from Tillman have gone the way of Kyle Seager and the Mariners have the first two men reach for Adam Lynn. And this will be an interesting at bat Adam in his first at bat. First couple of strikes called on him were fastballs that were well off the plate away. He ended up swinging to strike out on a pitch that was in a similar location. Didn't give him much choice. out to the mound out pitches for Tillman this year you can see the percentage on his strikeouts with the fastball slider and change up and again we talked about the ground ball earlier and that's what he's looking for right here so maybe you see a few more curveballs change up for sure try to get the double play I think more of the change up because it is a left handed hitter now not great command so far in this fourth inning for Tillman nine pitches only three strikes make it only two strikes. And 
Lynn gets ahead now two and nothing. The Mariners have the tying run at second base and Cruz and Seeger at first is the go ahead run. He's walked twice now. Lynn goes after it, pulls it foul. And that was on the changeup. Talked about his changeup, how much it has improved. Last year's changeup when he would throw for a strike, 65% of the time. This year he's all the way up to 71%. And he will use that pitch when he's behind in the count. Because he has the ability to throw it for strikes. Two and two. You see the opponent averages on his changeup. Go back to 2014. Lee hit 311 on his changeup. Was better last year at 219 and this year just 140. Even from 14 to 15, some vast improvement, and even more so this year. Most guys would be happy with just the 219. And for most pitchers, the changeup is the pitch that it seems like, Mike, when we hear pitchers talk, that's the field pitch, of course, more than anything else, and one that. That's a tough one to get to be able to throw for strikes consistently because it is such a field pitch more than anything else. Well, and you have two of the best this year pitching in this game. You have Tillman, we talked about the 140 average in Taiwan. Davis will step on the bag at first, easy out number one, but both vice runners move up, Cruz into third. And Seeger, who walked now at second. If you look at the lowest opponent's batting average against the changeup this year, you have Taiwan. He is fifth on the list at a 108 batting average, and Tillman is eighth. And a good opportunity for Ionetta, who had a base hit his first time up. Ionetta went after the first pitch, parked it into right field. Tying run now 90 feet from home. That's Cruz. And the go ahead and Kyle Seeger at second base. So Tillman has had to work with a runner in scoring position or multiple runners in scoring position in two of the last three innings. Goes after the first pitch again, spoils it foul. Corner infielders playing in, middle infielders playing back. Ground ball up the middle, should pick up a run. Off the plate, one ball and one strike. One out and the one one pitch. Really dialed it back at curve at 74, and it's one and two. We've seen about a 20 mile an hour difference, if not slightly more than that, tonight from Tillman from his curveball to his fastball. And you can't let these moments against Tillman pass you by with as much of a role as he's been on so far this year. Another curveball in the dirt. Tillman's last start gave up just five hits over seven scoreless. He punched out seven against the Tigers on Friday. Given up just four runs in his last four starts. He's won all of them. Twisting the opposite way. Rickard watches this one find a fan. Some ponchos out after just a little bit of a light rain in the very early innings here tonight. And like the Mariners have been doing, starting to work on his pitch count. Next pitch will be 70 for Tillman as he works here in the fourth. 
They cruise through the first, just nine pitches to retire the side in order. And a little bit of a lengthy second and now the fourth inning. I'm not sure if that's good news or not. Baltimore has the best bullpen in the American League. Mariners were able to get four runs off the bullpen last night. And as you can see, the crew there for the Orioles. All four of those runs coming off Brian Mattis. Vance Worley really saved the day for Baltimore as he picked up three innings in relief last night, three scoreless innings. Helped save the bullpen some. One out and two on. And the 2 2 to Ionetta. This is lifted out to center field. We'll send Jones curling over to the gap. Deep enough to make for round number two and to bring in Nelson Cruz. And this game is all tied up to a piece at the top of the fourth inning. Nice work by Ionetta. Found off a couple of pitches with two strikes as we take a look at the Mariners' calendar. Brought to you by Sleep Train. We hit the airwaves at 9 a.m. tomorrow back home. Pacific time for the finale of this three game series and then it's off to Cincinnati interleague play against the Reds a weekend series Reds getting thumped last night 13 to 1 and then it's off back home against the A's Oakland's now won four in a row so the Mariners are going to have an opportunity to face the best bullpen and the worst bullpen they will go from the best bullpen in the American League to the worst bullpen in baseball bounce straight back. Lead off double from Cruz has scored. Seager still hanging out at second base. Only two on Marte. Curtis telling me that Steve Delabar, the former Mariner, walked in four runs yesterday. That's a bad day at the office, Mike. Well, just. Give you an idea of the bullpen in Cincinnati and some of their struggles. There you are, raises it about six and a half. I mean, that is pushing historic in a bad way. Looking forward to Saturday, by the way, Mike, in Cincinnati. They will have the Griffey Duel bobblehead. The, really? The Reds and Mariners bobblehead. So pick me up five of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Waits on it. A skip, and it's taken by Machado. So smooth over short. Marte is out number three. 25 pitches for Tillman at the top of the fourth. The Mariners have tied it up on a sack fly by Ionetta. Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at Safeco.com. 
by CHI Franciscan Health, the Mariners' official partners in health. Learn to stay Northwest healthy at nwhealthy.org. And by BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. Well, not far from D.C., hop on the train, 40 minutes away. Nationals playing some good baseball these days. Dusty Baker, first year manager for the Nats this year as Taiwan comes in with the first pitch strike. And Chris Davis to strike out looking on a fastball back in the first. Check swing appeal to go. Gary Davis the crew chief man in third base tonight. Nationals taking on the Mets. What we thought was going to be a good pitching matchup last night it certainly was. Syndergaard beating Scherzer two to nothing. Double digit strikeouts on both sides. Syndergaard hit 100 plus miles an hour eight times last night. I saw a few sliders in the highlights 94 with some serious movement. Oh toward. yeah. He's 23 years old. Loki on a full sprint. He's got the room. Round number one. Now Syndergaard really more of a home run hitter. Power hitter. He's a power hitter. Yeah. He's got the flow working for him. One out nobody on it brings in Mark Trumbo who swatted his 12th home run of the season. His last at bat now tied for the league lead. Nolan Arenado of the Rockies is leading all of baseball with 13 home runs on the season entering today. He was able to get an 0 1 curveball that Taiwan just left up in the zone in the middle of the plate. Speaking of the Rockies, Mike, I'm, I promise that there will be a tie-in here. If you think about, you talk all the time about the Mariners' offense on the road this season. Yeah, how good it has been. But this Mariners' pitching staff has been lights out on the road. They have the lowest road earned run average in the American League. They have given up the second fewest runs in baseball on the road. Only the Cubs' pitching staff has allowed fewer. Their ERA has been off the charts. Away from Safeco Field, and that, that's where the Rockies tie-in is. You think that the Mariners would be you know, great pitching at home, right at a pitcher's ballpark, and they'd be junk on the road, just kind of like you think of the Rockies, how they're going to be scoring seven runs a game inside Coors Field. Trumbo up the middle for a base hit, and the Rockies typically their run production just falls off a cliff when they get away from Denver. But that hasn't been the case for the Mariners' pitching staff this year. I think that'll probably change as we work our way through the summer. Fastball, top of the strike zone, 94 miles an hour, and squared up again by Trumbo. He's not just hitting home runs, he's hitting over 300 on the year. He's squaring just about everything up these days. So you're saying law of averages at some point? I think so. Trumbo held by Lynn. Pitch misses to Weeders. Weeders, one of the few pitchers in recent his part of one of the few players in recent history to have Tommy John that has not been a pitcher. It's a lot of time because of elbow surgery. Oh, Crawford, an outfielder now with the Dodgers. He had Tommy John. Haven't been many. Martin having to show his numbers again. Long run. Martin can't make the catch. Trumbo had to hold up at second base. He's getting waved in. Throw coming in, and the tag will not be in time. Weeders has taken the lead right back to the Orioles.
So Trumbo and Weeder is doing all the damage in this one. Both of them with solo home runs. Trumbo with the base hit, and now this drive from Weeder is out to left center field. I think this is the first time this year that I can recall where I thought Martin would make the play, and he didn't. Again, having to cover a lot of ground, but normally he'll make that catch. Yeah, it was up against the wall. Strike one to Alvarez. So Baltimore back on top. Taiwan looking for a strikeout and you can see when he gets his strikeouts primarily with his fastball at 65 percent. No surprise to see the change up and again his curveball has been a good pitch for him this year. They have the shift on for Alvarez. First year with Baltimore. Strike makes it one and two. Oh, and the Orioles acquired Trumbo over the offseason. It really almost looked like it would roadblock them from acquiring Alvarez. Neither one known for their defense these days. Of course, they have Davis already at first base. And yet, very late in the offseason, the Orioles decided to go after and acquire Alvarez. And it's turned out to be a pretty good move. As we mentioned, J.J. Hardy, they're starting shortstop on the disabled list, so Machado has moved over to short, and now a platoon situation in many ways at third base and has involved the former first round draft pick Pedro Alvarez. And then we showed you the percentages for Taiwan when he gets two strikes on a hitter and wants to put him away. He missed with a curveball and now missing with that changeup. Scope is on deck. One out, Weeders at second. And the 3 2. The opposite way to Aoki having a race back. Aoki makes the catch. Now, number two, and Weeders has to stay put at second base. And comes Jonathan Scope, the strikeout victim, his last at bat. That RBI double from Weeder is the first run scored on, in this game from either side that has not come on the long ball. Martin, pardon me, the second run, the sacrifice fly as well by the Mariners and Chris Zainetta. But we have seen three solo homers early on here tonight as the wind picks up from inside Camden Yards. Last star, Michael. We're seeing it maybe even more tonight. What do you think? I think he has a pretty good one. I think if you look at it, the velocity has been right about where Mel Sotomayor wants to see it 87, 88 miles an hour, and typically he's able to get it either to the outside corner of the righties or just off the plate. Towards Oki again. Long run, a slide, and a catch. Scope out number three. Oki covered some ground. Mariners outfielders have. Had some highlights here tonight. A run in and a runner stranded. We're through four innings in Baltimore.
Orioles have taken the lead back three to two Baltimore as we take a look at our Jimmy John's delivery of the game and it's been the duo tonight Mike of Trumbo and Weeders hitting fifth and sixth in the lineup but you can see what they have done four for four batting couple of home runs a double a single three runs three RBIs and then all the damage that's a beauty dropping down a bunt oh. and a wiggles foul. There's always some sweet symmetry when a batter can hit for a home run and then drop down a bunt single in the same game, let alone in back-to-back at-bats. No, I would agree with that, and that was a pretty good effort right there. Unfortunately, here at Camden Yards, the cut of the grass is right on the foul line. And if it catches the edge of it, it's going to push it foul, and that's what happened to Martin right there. Off the hands, a soft pop-up. Easy play for Machado. Two pitches and one out. I'll be sure to stick around after the game for Mariners post game presented by Delta Airlines. Martin already going deep once tonight. It's sixth of the season. We'll hear from Scott Service. And of course, Taiwan Walker as well. Taiwan tonight making his eighth start of the season. One out the base is empty back to the top of the order here is Aoki for the third time. Tillman really had to labor in that top of the fourth. He faced five hitters but he threw 25 pitches. Allowed one run on the sacrifice fly from Chris Ionetta. Almost two thirds of his pitches tonight came in inning to go. Or one third of his pitches, pardon me. Davis, a scoop right by the back. Two up, two down. It brings in Seth Smith looking to reach for the first time tonight. Right down the line, Davis being aggressive. Surprised that he charged it the way he did over at first base. You have plenty of time. He can drop the step right there, maybe end up getting a bigger hop. Still would have had plenty of time to get Aoki. But it worked out for him. Only five pitches so far for Tillman to get the first two outs here at this top of the fifth inning. 80 total, 46 strikes. Seventy two mile an hour curveball missing for ball one. Well, the Mariners so far this year, they have been the beast of the East in many ways against the American League East. Now six and one and now the run differential is what really stands out. They've outscored opposing teams from the AL East 40 to 18 trailing by a run here tonight in the top of the fifth. One and two. Took two games out of three against the Yankees in New York and sweeping aside the Rays at home winning last night. Now, 10 of those 40 runs against the East came just a night ago. In play with the shift on. And the backhand on to first base for out number three. For the second time tonight for Tillman, nine pitches in one inning to get three outs.
All right, thank you, Andrew Bill. One one to Kim, it's fouled away. I think if you look at Taiwan tonight, he's hit 95 a few times, but he doesn't have his overpowering fastball. He has a good fastball, but not overpowering. And really, just two mistakes. It was the curveball, the old one curveball that he left up and in the middle of the plate. Typically, he won't do that. Trumbo hits the home run, and then he missed his spot badly with a fastball to Weeders that he hit out of the ballpark. They were trying to go down and away, ended up leaving it just above the knees on the inner half of the plate, and it hurt him. And you consider hitters ballpark, Baltimore, number two hitting team in the American League, first in home runs. Through the next couple of innings without giving up any more runs, it's a pretty good outing. Leadoff man Rickard is on deck. Kim at the plate, and it just misses. Seven pitch plate appearance for Kim, and that is walk number one tonight for Taiwan Walker. Now, as we mentioned in the pregame show, Mike, it all turned around after his start here last season. Yeah, just went three and a third here last year, was taken out of the ball game, and since that point, he's gone 19. The team has gone 19 and 9. He is 12 and 6, ERA under three and a half. Opponents average just 232, so a big difference for him. Orioles had the leadoff man to reach. Right back to Taiwan, and a wide airmail on the second base. Kim has to stay put. I think right here, Taiwan is his footwork. He's a good athlete, gets off the mound, makes the right decision to go to second base. Plenty of time, but you can see that front shoulder open up and the ball just sails on him going into center field. Kim with a little bit of a stumble. He definitely would have had him at second base. Mel Stottlemyre makes a trip out to the mound. First error this year from Taiwan. So Walker now working with runners at first and second. Nobody out. They could use a double play and to get the double play he'll probably go to his changeup. You can see ground ball rate at 87 percent on the changeup and as Aaron mentioned he's throwing a slider more tonight also a good option for him. And about to face the teeth of the order here is Machado. Lionetta with a bare hand on the first for round number one. So a swinging bunt works out for him. Walker has done a nice job keeping Machado down 0 for 3 tonight, including the strikeout. Machado hitting for the highest average on this team, now facing Adam Jones. Jones last night saw his eight game hitting streak snapped, and for his early struggles this year, Mike, you can see the numbers for Jones with runners in scoring position have been fantastic, over 380. And really gets to Taiwan again is going to try to keep the ball on the ground or get a strikeout. Infield's going to play in in this situation. For Adam, he's grounded out to short. It was a great play by Martin, jumping up on the fence in left center field, to take a hit away from him. Jones calls for time. Goes after the first pitch, right to Marte. Kim stays put at third. Out number two. Two outs for Chris Davis. If you're Buck Showalter, Mike, certain spots, certain guys, you choose to have the contact play emotion, and sometimes you don't, like we saw right there. Yeah, a little bit surprised right there. The infield was playing halfway, and 
more times than not in that situation if you have a runner at second you'll take a chance because he'll move up it to third if he ends up getting thrown out at the plate but I don't think Kim runs very well so they wanted to make sure it went through we saw him earlier and then running in the outfield so that has something to do with it too if you, you have to have, give yourself some sort of chance and typically like a faster runner a swinging strike to Davis I net it out to the mound for a quick word with Taiwan. Now, Taiwan trying to work around a leadoff walk and then an error. So far this evening, Taiwan has tried to get Davis out with the high fastball. Cam at third base, Rickard at second, two outs. <laughs> Taiwan has held Machado, Jones, and Davis tonight, a combined 0 for 8, trying to make it 0 for 9. Staying with the fastball right at the top of the strike zone. All four pitches, fastballs, all of them at 93 miles an hour. Now here's the, da the danger with Davis. If you go back since the start of 2014, only two players in the game have hit more home runs than Davis, but no one has struck out more than Chris Davis at the plate here with two strikes against him. And it is oftentimes boom or bust. Full count. A good pitch. They're all looking on. Well, they certainly would like to get Davis right here. Trumbull's waiting on deck, and he's hit the ball hard a couple of times, including a home run. Two outs, two in scoring position, and loads him up. Not close. Second walk of the inning for Taiwan. 87 pitches, 51 strikes. So Trumbo has hit a curveball out of the ballpark and hit his fastball, lined it right back up the middle. Not many chances, surprisingly, this year for Trumbo with the bags packed. 0 for 2. Here comes Kim, and Kim scores for two Baltimore. Well, that looks like a slider, kind of backs up on him, well out of the strike zone. Almost looked as if it slipped out of his hand. It's going to go down as a wild pitch. The first this year from Taiwan, it came with the bases full. Two and nothing. Meanwhile, Rickard into third base, Davis into second. Trumbo two for two tonight a home run and a single quickly on the ground to Marte he handles it easily for out number three a run in on the first wild pitch of the season for Taiwan Walker we are through five Orioles by two.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. And by Paint Your Wagon, playing June 2nd to the 25th. Tickets at fifthavenue.org. Good look inside the Jefferson Memorial. Very, very close to D.C. here from Baltimore and Camden Yards. It's about an hour away or so, give or take the traffic. Whether you're able to get on the train or not. We start at the top of the six. Robinson Cano looking for his first hit. Orioles getting a run on a wild pitch in the bottom of the fifth inning. Swinging strike on a curve. We have seen a lot of curveballs tonight from Tillman. Well, it has a, a really good curveball. Again, his changeup has been improved, but his curveball, I think, is still his best off speed pitch. Cone is hitting just 167 off his curveball, and he hasn't given up an extra base hit with it this year. Cano behind 0 2. Tillman made pretty quick work of the Mariners in the fifth, just nine pitches as Mike Montgomery begins to loosen up. We'll see him in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, Taiwan over 90 pitches. Bounces in two balls and two strikes to Robbie. Pretty good amount of room over towards right center. Rickard way off the line in right field. Tillman's 2 2. Last night and again in this game, just staying away from him, pitching him away. Hit the ball towards left field three times in last night's ball game, picking up a couple of hits. So far, once tonight to left field, line drive. Smash down the right field line and a foul ball. Carlos Torres, the first base umpire, very emphatically ruling that foul. And look at our best shot here. Good call. Yep. And that was a mistake from Tillman. Threw the fastball inside, and Robbie was able to turn on it. It was not bad. It was right on the inside corner. Again, they tried to go away from him. He was able to turn on it. Just foul. Cano entering tonight, batting 302, a dozen homers, 36 RBIs as he climbs in. Out to center this time. A lot of hang time. Jones having to cover some ground, and Jones. Gets one right back. He was robbed in the first, and he robs Cano here in the sixth. Four hundred and ten feet to dead center field here at Camden Yards, and Adam Jones needed all of it. Right up against the fence. You can see him try to brace himself. He knew he was getting close to the wall. And this is Martin robbing Jones in the first inning. Very loud out number one. And steps Cruz. Covers a lot of ground, obviously knows this outfield well, and you can see him take a peek at where the wall was at. Oh, 
Now, you know we mentioned last night the slow start that Jones got off to offensively this year. He was hitting beneath 200 over roughly his first 25 games and he was quoted earlier as saying if I'm not going to get mine you're not going to get yours and he referenced now if he's not hitting at the plate he can still you know, take some hits away in the outfield and we just saw that front and center. The 0 2 to Nelly. Cruz strikes out for the second time. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 devices. Includes a free subscription to At Bat, the number one app for live baseball. Visit Mariners.com for details. Fifth strikeout for Tillman and his first since the third inning. Now staring at Seeger with two outs and the base is empty. Kyle's been on base a couple of times. He's walked twice, walked in the second, and walked in the fourth. You know, we were talking earlier about his brother Corey, the young standout shortstop for the Dodgers. We can't forget about Justin Seeger, another younger brother, Justin just turning 24 just a few days ago. And Justin drafted by the Mariners, made his debut in the minors with. Short season Everett back in 2013, and this year he spent some time in both high A with Bakersfield and also with Double A Jackson, where he's played just a couple of games. So, congrats on Kyle's younger brother for getting the call up to Double A, which, Mike, I would imagine as a young player, if you get that call to the Double A, it might almost feel like you're getting the call to the big leagues. And the same story for when you go to the Triple A, and every level kind of feels like well, a you, big win. Yeah, you feel like you're just getting closer to being here. So congratulations to him. Two outs and nobody on Seeger ahead of the count. And Seeker is without an official at bat tonight. He has walked all three times up. Warehouse in right field, very iconic. Shot here at Camden Yards, light tower attached. Maybe Adam Lynn can hit a baseball off of it. <laughs> Adam 0 for 2 tonight, picked up a base hit in last night's game. Now he is a tie and run all of a sudden as Tillman is at the century mark, 100 pitches. He threw 107 in his last start. Lynn has had a wide zone against him tonight. Some tough calls, pitches away. They're not on the corner, they're off the plate, but Rob Drake consistently calling up strikes. Alvarez far off the bag. And a throw on the money. Seeger, a two out walk is stranded. We go to the bottom of the six. Mike Montgomery coming in, taking over for Taiwan Walker.
Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. How about Chris Davis? You and the Mariners a solid last night. First career game with three home runs. His first career walk-off hit. And, of course, his first career grand <laughs> slam as the A's took down the Rangers in dramatic fashion last night from the Coliseum. A final of 8-5. to 4-2 as we go to the bottom of the sixth here from Baltimore. Middle game of the series. And Taiwan Walker done for the night. Just five innings, Mike. Yeah, disappointing five innings. Just five hits, four runs, three of them earned. He had a couple of walks, three strikeouts. He threw 91 pitches, gave up a couple of solo home runs in this one. Mike Montgomery going to take over. He's really pitched well out of the bullpen. 13 appearances on the year, a 1-0 record ERA at a 2.29. 17 strikeouts and 19 and two-thirds. Opponents hitting just 182. Well, Montgomery, a good fastball, 94 to 95 miles an hour. We'll see a curveball and a changeup from him. He turns Weeders around to bat right handed. Pops it up off the hands. Inet has got plenty of space. One pitch, one out. How about we take a look at our Geico this date in history? We'll go back to 1980. Mariners lost 6 to 5 in Chicago at Comiskey Park to the White Sox. Dan Meyer went deep. Bruce Bakhti, three singles to lead the Mariners' offense. But of course, this was uh, the day back in 1980 when Mount St. Helens erupted. The Mariners were in Chicago. That was a Sunday day game. Uh, the Mariners flew commercially on their way back home. No charters in that those days. And we were fortunate enough, Mike, to get the story over the telephone today from Ken Wilson. And uh, Ken, hope he's doing well. Absolutely. Ken saying that uh, the charter, or part of me, the commercial flight, after it started heading towards Seattle, went south and kind of came up uh, above Portland. And you could see the destruction pretty clearly, it sounds like, from a window seat. Yeah, a lot of ash and issues all across the state, really. And where were you on that day? I was, at a, I was at a baseball camp. I think I was in the ninth grade at the time. Kind of a tough thing for a ninth grader to soak in, I would have to imagine. Yeah, because you really didn't understand what was going on. Three and two. I think that ended up getting a piece of the home plate umpire. Rob Drake, our home plate umpire tonight in his ninth season. And the name Rob Drake should probably be one known by some Mariners fans if you really want to win some trivia contests. He was behind home plate. He was calling balls and strikes back on August 15th of 2012. The day when Felix spun his perfect game against Tampa Bay. It, it was really a treat today to hear from Rob Drake talking about that day and he really did a great job Mike of, of kind of putting things in perspective the first question you have to ask him was well how nervous were you especially with two outs in the ninth inning and he said he had never been more nervous in his life on a baseball field there was no instant replay of course at that time in 2012 Armando Galarraga just years before had had his perfect game Blown by Jim Joyce, a move that Joyce has you know, on numerous occasions spoken very outwardly about how regretful he is in that moment. And Drake said that he had that fresh in his memory that entire game because he said after the third inning, he knew that there was a chance that Felix could at least spin a no hitter, if not a perfect game. Because of the type of stuff he had that day. He said the Rays couldn't even sniff him. Yeah. yeah you never think of that, but. I would imagine as a home plate umpire you would be a little bit nervous about it. Obviously you can understand maybe even Felix when he gets towards the end of it when it's right there and you know you can feel it. Certainly the fans are into it. A lot of pressure on him behind home plate. Joe Madden got run from that game. And a lot of people will contend that that was kind of a stalling tactic or a distraction maybe is a better way to put it for Madden 
little gamesmanship to try to get Felix off of his game and and Drake said throw his rhythm off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Drake said that Madden said to him your strike zone's too wide. <laughs> and Drake said today that he thinks that the only strike three or the only called strike that he had the entire game was the final pitch that ended it. That's amazing in itself really. A one out walk to Alvarez two and nothing to scope. Oh, Mike's all over the place today. This gives Alvarez second base. Really haven't seen this from him. Typically he has pretty good command. I think that pitch actually hit him. No, you're right. This fastball at 93 miles an hour has some cut to it and it hits him on the knee. So Mike, who's really pitched well out of the pen and commanded the strike zone, especially with his fastball, having a tough time right now. Nolan Reimold will pinch hit for Kim. So Kim done for the day, 0 for 1, a walk and a run scored. Came home with a wild pitch by Taiwan. We saw Reimold last night bat eighth and start in left field. He went 0 for 3. Well, to close the thought on. Felix is perfect game. Felix has one of the best quotes. When I asked him last year what he was thinking when he had two outs and two strikes in the ninth inning, up the middle for a base hit. So bring Alvarez into third base. He gets the stop sign there from Bobby Dickerson, the third base coach. Bags are packed against Montgomery. A walk, a hit batter, and now a single. Well, watch the Mariners take batting practice with Mariners team president Kevin Mather right behind the batting cage. Save the date June 1st and you could bid on auction items like this during Mariners care charity night. All proceeds of course benefit Mariners care. Felix said with two outs and two strikes in the ninth, in the ninth inning Mike the one thing he was thinking throw another changeup. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah, I would say so. Dance with the girl who you took. Now well, I'm sure everybody in the ballpark knew he was throwing a change up and. Didn't really matter. Montgomery in some hot water here, one out. And the base is full. So Rimel to pinch hit single. Double play ball sends this game to the seventh. But right now, one out runners all around for Joey Rickard. On the ground, Seeger, the backhand, the stop, the throw, and a double play keeps this game manageable. We are through six innings. Mariners down by two.
All right, thank you, Angie. We go to the top of the seventh. Tillman over 100 pitches. We'll face Ionetta. Mariners have not had a hit against Tillman since the leadoff double by Cruz in the fourth. Line drive, and it's over the new third baseman Ryan Flaherty's glove into the corner. Ionetta hunting for second. And the Mariners catcher stands up with a double. Good start to the top of the seventh. That'll bring the tie and run to the plate. Nolan Reimold is the new left fielder. A couple of changes for Buck Showalter. Little breaking ball looks like the slider. Lines it into left field. Tillman 103 pitches. His season high as far as the pitch count goes is 110. He's done that a couple of times. Marte goes after the first pitch. Marte, a fielder's choice and a ground down in this one tonight. Looking for his first hit of the series tonight, game two. A bunt and it's fouled back. Leaders having a talk with Chris Tillman. Now the Orioles have won each of Tillman's last five starts. Baltimore leading four to two in the top of the seventh. The Mariners with something going. Half the blue dump double by Ionetta. Here comes the 0 2. Nick Vincent getting loose in the Mariner pen, so he will pitch the bottom of the seventh. Well, good work by Montgomery in that double play ball. First pitch swinging, Joey Rickard, 5 3. Able to get out of a bases loaded one out jam. Chopping after it, still 1 and 2. Casey Candale getting some infield work over there at first base. He can still handle it. Martin waiting on deck. Martin one for two. One hit a home run, his sixth home run of the year. Two balls and two strikes. RBI chance here for Marte as Tillman begins to wear down a little bit. Keeping an eye on Ionetta. Marte 0 for 3, strikeout number 6 tonight for Tillman. And here comes Buck Showalter. Host your next company event or annual outing in a suite at Safeco Field. Whether entertaining 14 or 400, your guests will enjoy Mariners baseball from a premium seating location, complete with catering and VIP parking. Learn more at mariners.com slash premium. Now the crowd rising to its feet here from inside Camden Yards. Chris Tillman getting a standing ovation. We've got a pitching change. One out. Ionetta at second base.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. By Jack of the Box, taste the bacon-licious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack of the Box. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Good look at the Lincoln Memorial. Not far from D.C. here in Baltimore and the final line here from Tillman. Pitched well tonight. Six and a third, just four hits. A couple of runs they were earned. Three walks, six strikeouts, 109 pitches. He threw 65 strikes. Brad Brock, the new pitcher, right-hander out of the bullpen for Buck Showalter. Now you can see how you take a look here at the back end of the bullpen for the Orioles, and they have been awfully stingy. Darren O'Day's three earned run average would be less if he had not given up back-to-back -back home runs in his last outing against the Tigers. Somewhat controversial home run to J.D. Martinez after a check swing, but this has been a tough bullpen. And you can see Brad Brock is in the game now, a 1-3-5 ERA. He has really pitched well. Our team goes around one and one. Martin is the tie and run. Go back to the third inning. The first at bat tonight for Martin, Mike. He gets himself into a good count and takes advantage of a fastball. Belt high, middle of the plate. He hits it out onto the street. His sixth home run of the year. Down swinging. High fastball. Well out of the strike zone at 94 miles an hour. Aoki looking for his first hit 0 for 3 tonight. Mariners 0 for 5 runners in scoring position. And try not to spoil the leadoff double by Ionetta on the first pitch of the seventh inning. This Orioles bullpen entered last night with the lowest ERA in the major league for those four runs the Mariners got off Brian Mattis last night in back of Ubaldo Jimenez. Has now moved the Mets bullpen up to the best in terms of ERA in the majors this year. And you know, the Orioles right now have it to settle for second, tops in the American League. Brock has been especially tough against right handed hitters. He's facing a couple of lefties right out of the gates. Lefties batting 200 against Brock, which seems really pretty appealing compared to the 091 average that right handers have against him. You can see a little bit of that whiplash delivery. And throwing across his body probably hides it pretty well from the righties. Two outs at Ionetta at second base. Aoki caught looking on a pitch outside. Ionetta stranded. Time to stretch. Orioles by a couple.
Lottery mobile app. This break in the action would be the perfect time to check winning numbers played today. Very pleasant night here from Camden Yards. 4 2 Orioles have the lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh. We will hit the airwaves tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Nathan Carnes making start number eight against an unknown for the Mariners, Tyler Wilson. Tyler Wilson has pitched well, though. ERA under three. Spent some time in the bullpen. It's taken over for Giovanni Gallardo, one of you know, two mainstays for the Orioles on the disabled list, J.J. Hardy the other. Montgomery facing Machado, the number two hitting shortstop for the Orioles to begin the last of the seventh. Tough part of the lineup. Machado, Jones, and Davis do up. Trumbo after that. And Mike, we were talking earlier about the Chris Davis Grand Slam last night to take down the Rangers and the A's beating Texas again earlier today, eight to one. So the Mariners, as we speak, have a game and a half lead over the Rangers. But isn't it? Funny, we talk all the time about how volatile and unpredictable a major league bullpen can be yes. from year to year. And we are looking at a perfect case study in the Texas Rangers. Yes. The 2 1 makes it 2 and 2. I think most people thought that was going to be a real strength for them when you look at the arms that they have out in that pen. Well, the Mariners and many fans, both for his personality and because of his production, groaned when Tom Wilhelmson was sent to Texas. Jonas Martin coming back in return, which has paid a lot of dividends early on. Now number one. Well, Tom Helpson is now calling Round Rock, Texas home, as he was optioned to AAA uh, a few days ago at this point. Sean Tolleson, who really had struggled. been tied with Steve Ciszek for the league lead in saves, has lost his job now as the Rangers closer after a couple of just disastrous blown saves, including last night. And so now it looks as though maybe Sam Dyson, who's got just that nasty power sinker, will at least be the closer for now. And whether or not John Daniels and the Rangers want to do something to the deadline, we'll find out in a couple of months, depending on how they feel with Dyson holding that spot. Well, what you'd like to see is as they're trying to figure all of that out, how the Mariners get you on know, a nice little run. Take advantage of that. And with you Separate Darvish himself. not being there. Yeah. Although Darvish is on the path back, he's had a handful of rehab starts. One out, nobody on. And then you look at the other side of that coin. Mike Montgomery, who had never pitched in relief in his life, has been by and large nailed for the Mariners this year. A bullpen that was just littered with question marks going into spring training. Some of those were answered over the month's stay in Peoria, but still, even leaving camp, a lot of questions. And the Mariners entering tonight the third best bullpen in the league and the fifth best in the majors. So. Even Jerry Depoto, who had made a career working out of a bullpen, has said that's something that you just can't predict. And we really knew very little about him, and we ended up picking him up at the end of spring training. That's Nick Benson, who's also pitched extremely well out of the pen. And with the amount of time that Benoit has been gone, and Tony Zick going on the DL, that turned out to be a nice move. And no Furbush. Up and in. Here comes the 2 2 for Montgomery. Seeger knocks it down. Looks like right off the heel of his glove. Jones is out. Seeger might have jumped too high. Well, this Sunday, join Dan Wilson, Jay Buhner, Randy Johnson, Gary Payton, and many more special guests at the All Star Softball Classic at Safeco Field. Your ticket will help at risk youth win the battle for their future. Visit uwkc.org for tickets. Kids 14 and under are free. Two up, two down, facing Chris Davis. Oh, 
one and one. Montgomery took over for Taiwan who went five innings here tonight. Four runs, five hits for Walker. A couple of walks, three strikeouts. 91 pitches for Taiwan in what was his eighth start of the season. Goes after pitch well up high. Easy ground ball to Cano. And Montgomery, who had to work out of a bases loaded one out jam of the sixth, retires the side in order easily here in the seventh. Difference of the game as the Orioles took the lead. Weeders a double. And Martin looked like he was going to get to Mike. Yeah, it looked like he was going to make the catch. I was surprised that he hadn't. It would have been an exceptional play, but we're used to seeing him make it all the time. And then this wild pitch ends up going to the backstop, and Kim will score. Now, Taiwan known so much for his command. That was his first wild pitch of the season. It happened to come with the bases full. The score run. And you look at that inning, they did not get a hit. It was a couple of walks. Throwing air by Taiwan and then the wild pitch. And kind of a weird one. Yeah, strange inning. Not used to seeing that. Smith 0 for 3 tonight behind the count 0 and 1. Robbie still had a little bit of a look of surprise on his face today when talking about Seth Smith taking that pop up in shallow right last night. I thought it was great. <laughs> Here comes Adam Jones, a stroll of the park. We're at number one. Well, Mariners fans, four dealers in the Pacific Northwest are helping local community food banks by hosting a peanut butter drive to make sure no child goes hungry this summer. Visit your local Ford store today to donate an unopened jar of peanut butter. For more information on how to donate, visit www.fordfeedskids.org. No, looking for his first hit over three tonight. Now Robbie comes into this game with a 10 game hitting streak in this ballpark. 16 hits in those 10 games with only two strikeouts. So surprised in some ways to see a punch out looking no less. Back in the third inning. Don't see that very often, often no matter the ballpark when Cano's at the plate. No and two. And after ball one. Yeah. 
Nelson Cruz is on deck. He's a tying run. You know, trying to find a way aboard. Long range here. Scope can't get a good handle on it. Kicks it a foul ground, and Cano hustling into second base, and he's safe. Base hit for Robbie. Take a look at it, and it looks as if it goes right off the end of the glove from Scope, trying to you know, trying to slide and make the play. They have ruled that a double. We'll see if that changes at some point to a single and an error. But for the time being, a two base hit with one out, and now Nelson Cruz is at the plate representing the tying run. And as we were talking about in the seventh, this is where Brock has really feasted. That is against right handed hitters. Righties are three for 33 against Brock. However, all three of those hits have been for extra bases, a couple of doubles and a homer. One and one. And a pretty good slider. A couple sliders to Cruz so far. Almost in the same exact spot. Mariners need somebody to come up with a big base hit. Oh for six runners in scoring position tonight. After going five for eight in last night's game. And you look at how this game has progressed for the Mariners. They stranded Ionetta at second base in the seventh and left Seeger at second base in the fourth. Seeger left at third base in the second. And Kyle waiting on deck. So the Mariners haven't left that many, but those that they have left have been in scoring position by and large. Seeger getting loose. Cano the double at second base. Nelson lays off, looks at a full count. Cruz doubled and scored back in the fourth inning. He came home on Ionetta's sacrifice fly. Mariners starting to run out of outs in this one tonight, down by two in the top of the eighth. But a prime chance here. The 3 2 up high. The Mariners have two on for Kyle Seeger. Left hander getting loose in the pen for the Orioles. Zach Britton. Britton about as tough of a closer as there is. A converted starter. Now Buck Showalter has enjoyed the fruits of this bullpen so far this year. It's being tested here as it was last night. Ball one to Seeger. Now Brock came out of the bullpen to take over for Tillman and just steamrolled his first two batters. He got up Martin and Aoki both to strike out. After Smith flew out to center field, a double by Cano and a walk to Cruz. Seeger's the go ahead run. And a good count for him. Outfielders playing straight up. And Weeders wants to talk. Now this is a ballpark Taylor made for Kyle Seeger. Short portion right. Kyle's power is to right field. We saw it last night. Went out to right center. Benoit and Peralta both getting loose in the Mariner pen. Seeger to right field for a base hit. 
And he acted, puts up both arms, holds Cano at third base, and the Mariners have him loaded. A double, a walk, and now a single. Oh, Kyle gets himself into a good count at 2 and 0. Oh. And Brock throws the fastball, and here comes Buck Showalter. Take a look at the swing by Kyle. 94 mile an hour fastball elevated out over the plate. Kyle gets on top of it and drives it into right field. So Buck Showalter going to his closer with one out, and the base is full in the top of the eighth inning. Zach Britton coming on, so is Deho Lee to pinch it for Adam Lynn. The Mariners and BECU are partnering once again to offer family fun at a discounted price at Safeco Field. Families can purchase select few level seats for one low price. The next event comes your way on Monday at 7 10 against the A's when the Mariners come back home, so secure your savings now at Mariners.com. Britton's been awfully tough this year, Mike. 10 for 10 and save opportunities at 176 ERA, 18 strikeouts, only three walks and 15 a third. Opponents hitting 120. He's given up one home run. Cano reached on a double. Cruz didn't walk, and Seeger poked a single into Ryan Field. So the base is loaded. The Mariners have a pitch hitter as Scott Service goes to his bench and calls on Day Holding. Going to hit for Adam Lynn. See what he's done as a pinch hitter this year. Overall, hitting 250 with five home runs. Looks at ball one. So the Mariners have the tying run. Nelson Cruz at second base, the go ahead at first. And a pretty good fastball from Britain at 96 miles an hour. Two pitches for Britain. Fastball in the curve. Frank gets over that time at 96. Britton enters tonight's game a save away for the league lead, shared by a few, including Steve Ciszek, but he has not blown a save this season. And he is called on here for a five out save. One and two. First time he has faced a man with the bags packed behind him. Here comes the one two. Stays alive. No, nothing but heat so far. And they're trying to keep the ball down and away from him. All fastballs, all of them at 96 miles an hour. Britton has given up just one home run so far this season. And only one other extra base hit. That's it.
Still alive. Hasn't given him much to handle yet. Adam Lynch Knight is over with 0 for 3. Lifted for De Holy, a right handed hitter. Cano at third, Cruz at second. Seeger to go ahead and run at first base. And again, the 1 2. Down on strikes. All fastballs. Six pitches, five of them in the same spot, down and away. I'll bring up Chris Ionetta. Take another look at this fastball from Britain, all of them 96 miles an hour. Ionetta having a good night. Had a base hit in the second, sack fly in the fourth, and a double in the seventh. Has seen Britain just a handful of times. Goes after the first pitch. Scope handles it routinely. And that'll be it for the Mariners at the top of the eighth inning. They leave them loaded. Over on the mound for the Mariners. Now how about we go back and take a peek at 1970, the World Series? As this one pitted the Orioles and the Reds. Jim Palmer, Hall of Famer, he's just down the broadcast wing from us here. Brooks Robinson today is celebrating now his 79th birthday, one of the greats of all time. 16 gold gloves. We take a look. No batting gloves for Robinson, that's for sure. And the short visor. Now this was not exactly filmed in 4K, but you get the point. It's a pretty sweet old footage. So Brooks Robinson, one of the best of all time, a Hall of Famer, turning 79 here today. Went to the Hall of Fame in 1983, his first year of eligibility. How about the leg kick from Palmer? The thing about it is it's not just a high leg kick, but how straight he would keep his leg. Peralta will take over. 18 appearances on the year for him. 4.70 ERA, 21 strikeouts, five walks, and 15 and a third. Opponents hitting 224. He's giving up five home runs. Facing Trumbo. Now we saw Benoit warming up at the bullpen, and it figures that if the Mariners had taken the lead, we probably would have seen Benoit here in the bottom of the eighth. Is what would have been his first appearance since coming off the disabled list, but Peralta will work here down by two.
Trumbo two for three on the night a home run his 12th. Now many 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 years ago Joel Peralta was an infielder. Well before he ever knew he would reach the major leagues as a pitcher. Played in the Dominican with the A's organization. And apparently as Joel says uh, Mike he was not too good with the stick. <laughs> well he's had a long career on the mound I can tell you that. No doubt about it. The one two to Trumbo. He said that his baseball career or what he thought would be his baseball career was essentially over. He was released was told that he would not make it as a position player and one day he was essentially pitching in it really amounted to not a whole lot more than a pickup game back in his hometown and his good friend was the manager of that game very informal once again here comes the one two to Trumbo just gets a piece back to the glove of Ionet a good start for Peralta and it was just a brutal game for Peralta's team they were down by double digits late in the game and his friend the manager said can you go mop up things for us a little bit just throw a couple of innings and ball started coming out pretty good a little life had some movement had a couple of different pitches and Peralta said he thought nothing of it until after the game his friend said you, you might want to think about pitching maybe pitching a little bit <laughs> and here we see him today and a very good career out of it first pitch strike to Weeders. Got him reaching for it. It's 0 and 2. Peralta now 40 years old, broke into the big leagues back at 05 with the Angels. In fact, he made his stateside debut. Think about this from the Dominican. He makes his professional debut in the States in Butte Montana <laughs> a little bit of a culture shock for a young Joel Peralta Mike Napoli was on his team they were both farmhands with the Angels at the time this was back in 2000 coming in quickly with it it's fouled away I haven't seen the quick pitch in a few outings for him he was due. He was due. Is that part of the scouting report, you think? With him? Yes. yes. They'll, they'll make everybody aware that he will do that. And he did it again. Two and two. Does that rub a hitter the wrong way or is that just part of the game. No. I think once you've seen it one yeah. time you don't worry about it anymore. The shift is on. Leaders back batting left handed. High the opposite way sends Oki on a sprint. Nori can't get there. What a night for Leaders. Three hits all for extra bases. A one out double. On Sunday, May 22nd, join Seattle Seahawks Jermaine Curse, John Ryan, Cooper Helfit, Sonic's great, Gary Payton, and more special guests at the All Star Softball Classic at Safeco Field. Your ticket will help at risk youth win the battle for their future. Grab your All Star Classic tickets now at uwkc.org. And kids under 14 are free.
Flaherty stepping in came into the game for Alvarez defense so his first at bat tonight. Alvarez finish one for two with a walk. Now Peralta still trying to keep this one close. Very manageable down by two. When we go to the ninth, it'll be Marte, Martin, and Oki don't do up for the Mariners. Through the left side. Weeders will have to hold at third. Back to back base hit with one out. Ends up jamming him a little bit. 89 mile an hour fastball just fights it off. Yep, that's on the label. Fights it off going the other way. You can see the big hole on the left side of the infield. Fortunately, Weeders does not run well. No chance to score him. So Peralta needs a double play ball right here. Looking at Jonathan Scope, the second baseman batting eighth. Chet Smith, medium depth. Weeders coming down the line. Here comes a throw, the tag. He's safe. And a little bit surprised that they sent him. I think Seth had a chance to throw him out. Take a look at it. Gets behind it. Strong throw. A little bit off line. You see Chris having to reach all the way around his body to try to put the tag back on it as it goes off the heel of his glove. Rymel came on as a pinch hitter for Kim and picked up a base hit back in the sixth inning. His second hit back. Waits back on a breaking ball. Dejo Lee, who has taken over first base, gives a look, but strike one. Yeah, Mike, to prove your point on being surprised that Weeders went on that, last night Weeders pumped one basically off the wall in center field and was held to a single. Now, part of that, Martin has a very plus arm in center field, but and played it perfectly off the wall, but he just doesn't run well, and they decided to take a chance right there. Paid off. Flaherty at second base with two outs. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Now entering tonight, the Orioles had lost back to back games at home for just the second time all year. They have yet to lose three straight, so that was in jeopardy tonight. They lead it by three runs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Rymel ahead of the count now three balls and one strike. I think Peralta will give in to him. Yeah, first base is open. And the right handed hitter waiting on deck and Rickard. He'll try to make his pitch right here. If he misses, just start over with a new count. Got him swinging. Three and two.
The Mariners two runs in this game came in back to back innings. It was Martin with a solo blast in the third to begin things. And then Ionetta a sack fly in the fourth. That's been all she's wrote offensively tonight for the Mariners facing very tough starting pitcher in Chris Tillman. Tillman pitched into the seventh. Went six and a third. And the Orioles are trending in the way that would give Tillman. They'll give the Orioles rather their sixth straight win in each of his last six starts. I thought Tillman threw the ball well tonight and pretty good stuff. Two outs and Flaherty at second base. He reached on the opposite way single. Here comes the 3 2. Soft pop up over towards Deho Lee. Foul ground. Right by Wayne Kirby. Out number three. A run in and a runner left. Mariners down to their final three outs, trailing by three runs. All right, thank you, Ange. I'll have to get to once this one's over with as Ketel Marte looks at a first pitch missing from Zach Britton. Mariners down to their final three outs here tonight. Britton is looking to do something tonight that he's done just three times prior, and that is collect a five out save. He did it three times last year. In fact, the last time. That he did this feat was against the Mariners on August 10th of last season. And in today's game, that is very rare. Most managers will not bring their closer in under any circumstances except for the ninth inning. Really ties up Marte, turns him into a pretzel. It's two and two. Well, especially in this particular case, as we take another look at that swing, we tied him up with 95 miles an hour on the inside corner, not able to get to it. Late swing. Marte leading off the ninth. No doubt, Buck Showalter has his reasoning for going to Britain with one out of the eighth inning, but you would think at least on the surface level that with a bullpen as strong and as deep especially on the back end that Showalter has that he would have some type of bridge man to get those final two outs in the eighth inning then hand the baton over to Britton but not the case here tonight at least. Well 
especially they, they had the day off yeah. on Monday and used their long guy in last night's game. So you would think that all the rest of them would be available. Normally you would think that that guy but might he decided it's time to go to my best <laughs> and I'm, I'm not waiting around anymore. I think the situation in the eighth inning is what caused it. And that's the Mariners having the bases loaded at the time there. They have a two run lead. Able to oh, just foul. Just sports foul. I think under normal circumstances Darren O'Day would be that guy. O'Day's been re-signed with the Orioles during the offseason and it's a ground ball pitcher. Yeah. yeah Funky delivery. Yeah. Really good. Submariner. Mm -hmm. You can see O'Day there, former Florida Gator. Marte trying to stay alive and get a hit. It's a full count. He's working hard. This will be the tenth pitch of this at bat. Trying to find a way to get on base. Mariners need three runs to tie this one up here in the top of the ninth. Need some base runners. What a battle here by Marte. Pitch number 10 spoiled foul. And trying to get the five out save. This is something that Buck Showalter did not want to see. Britain having to throw a lot of pitches. Squirts it in fair with a little steam behind it. And Marte may get his way into second base. 11 pitch at bat for Marte. That was impressive. Kept fouling off the fastball, and it looks as if he gets a breaking ball right here. Here it is. Yeah, it's the curveball. Nice short swing. It's right down the line. And it's scoring position for Martin. Well, to put that at bat in perspective, because that gets real to strike. Britton, as we take another look at this one, that's a curveball. Buckled him a little bit. Keeping an eye on Marte. One and one. Britton this year, who's been one of the best closers in the league, has had three saves where he has thrown as many or fewer pitches than what he just threw to Cattell Marte in that one at bat. And that kind of puts what Marte yeah. did in perspective a little bit. And regardless of the outcome of this game, to see a young player like that battle against what has turned out to be an established closer in Britain. One guy throwing 96 miles an hour, making some good pitches. Oh, good breaking ball in there. Britain's arm is fresh. He last threw about five days ago a save. He used only eight pitches to get three outs against the Tigers. Gets away from Weeders. And this will easily give Marte third base. Fastball. Yeah, that's a wild pitch. Just throws it in the dirt. Nobody out, Marte. At third, and Martin hacks right through 96. Yeah. 
ninety six right on the inside corner. Late swing. Aoki trying to get on base to bring the tie in run to the plate. That would be Seth Smith. No, nope. it would be Franklin Gutierrez. Which would make sense with Britain lefty up on the mound. Spin move by Aoki for strike one. Franklin Gutierrez has come out on deck. He will pinch it for Seth Smith. Out of Weeder's glove, but sports up the line. So Britain now 25 pitches. He is approaching a season high. In fact, he's one away from it. It'll be interesting tomorrow if he's available. Come jumping right back with the early game, 12:35 game. Play right back to Breton, makes eyes with Marte and throws a missile out of first base. Now to the final out. Uh, maybe he would hold on to it a little bit too long, but he was able to just get him. Take a look at it. Just in time. So two outs. Marte, who reached on a double, moved to third on a wild pitch. He is 90 feet from home. And Franklin Gutierrez is going to pinch hit. Goes after the first. Soft squibber. Britton has a hard time picking it up. He collects. And that is it. A five out save for Zach Britton as this series has evened up one game apiece. And that's kind of what you expected, but the Mariners have a chance to win the series tomorrow. They have Nathan Carnes going for him, so hopefully, with, with the way Nathan has been throwing lately, pretty good chance for him. Unfortunately, tonight, not enough offense, just one for 12 runners in scoring position. Big night for Trumbo and Weeders on the Orioles' side to help propel the Orioles to a game of two win. Mariners post game presented by Delta Airlines. It starts right now with Angie and Bill. Guys, take it away.